But also, Joshua White is a, it's a really good fight. And I've, you know, I've also got a job to deliver Dylan White a world title shot. Because he deserves a world title shot. I think we all agree on that, right? Yeah. So, he's a Brit. He's with us. He deserves a world title shot. Give him the shot. <coughs> right then. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Big Porky here. I'm, uh, what do you think? No porky top. <laughs> Keep on trucking. Oh, I want to get mud on my shoes. A uh, few things I want to uh, have a chat about. Uh, first things first, I want to thank the lads at uh, Bullseye. For uh, for the magic trees under the ice, I think I thanked them the other day, didn't I? Isn't it nice when you get stuff for note? Nobody's ever given me note in my life. So when you get some, it's nice, isn't it? So thank you very much, chaps. I've uh... the only problem with magic trees, you can never get a right mirror, can you? Uh, I did jot a few things down that I wanted to talk about. First of all, I want to mention this because uh, he's a pal of Frank Smith's and Peter Fury's. I've only met him a few times. His name's H-A-R-J-E-E-T Harjit S-I-N-G-H Singh B-H-A-T-T-I Harjit Singh Batty. He's on box rec. And uh, I saw him sparring David Adderley and Yuian. He just didn't look right. The kid didn't look right, and it, it turns out he's got cancer. And that is four and zero as well. I think he would have cruised with it. Oh no, he's heavyweight. He, he's uh, he's only a young lad as well. He's 25 years of age, four and zero with three knockouts. And he, and he, he needs a, a, a donor or something. I don't know if it's bone transplant or anything. I don't know, but if any boxing fans out there want to show any concern or find out what it's about, if you go log on to Peter Fury's Twitter timeline, you'll, you'll see. Uh, very quiet kid, nice guy. Uh, he didn't say much when I was here. Um, he, uh, Robin Reed will know about him. Uh, I think Robin had him on the pads and that. We were doing some work with him. And uh, black eyes. Black black car, black magic trees. But in it awful. This is why we should cherish every single day. This is why I cherish every day. And this is why after today I'm uh, I'm going out wagging. I'm going out wagging. Uh, I'm packing and drinking, I'm packing and partying, and uh, I'm going to be starting training tomorrow. So, big porky back. Don't know how long I'll last night, but I just think that I perform better with channel if I'm uh, sober. But sometimes you can be in an office, can't you? And when I when I want them people, I like to be out. This is why I prefer to do videos in car. But when I get out. When I, I feel like I have to have a release, but all my best stuff that I've done is when I've been when I've been sort of sober or not not uh, not day not day after going out or things like that. So so I'm packing and drinking. Pork is on the wagon, but I did jot some things down. Let me just have a look in here. I got oh, I used to take it. Too. Frank, I'm not being rude if I don't answer your text. I'm just, I'm just filming it. I'll give you a ring later, but I have mentioned it in my videos for you, pal. All right, and if you speak to the kid, uh, give him my best, yeah. All right, my friend. Cheers, pal. Uh, quite a sad start, isn't it? Today's filming, that, isn't it? Really, uh, quite a sad start. Uh, hello, Nicola. 
I hope you like the video that uh, NJ's put up. Eddie Hearn dancing in his sandals. Uh, I'll just ask Dennis to share it on Twitter. Because I'm not sharing that. I'm not sharing that. I think you're better than that. I think you're better than that. It's in bad taste. How is it in bad taste? Get a grip, Dennis. How is that video in bad taste? Have a look at that video. Have a look. Dennis with a touch of morality. Boxing promoters. Oh my god. We it all now. So I slammed phone down on him. Let's see when Porky blows a fuse. He blows a fuse. Right. Uh, does Eddie Hearn shower in his... Uh, in his toupee? I don't know really. To be honest, uh, somebody's asked me that. Do you think he has a shower in it, Ross? I said, I don't know, but he's got more air now than he had ten years ago, hasn't he? I don't know. Can you shower in a toupee? Eddie, do you shower in your toupee? I don't know. If anybody's uh, got a query about it, answers on a postcode, on a, on a postcard. <laughs> or answers in an email. Send me your emails to porkycorner at mail.com Keep your predictions coming in, guys and girls, for the Prediction League, because it's, uh, it, it's, it's trying to get a bit of light, more light in it. It's, uh, it's going all right, the Prediction League, at the moment. I'm getting one of them, a big white board thing to put in office, and I'm going to total it up every month, but every single one of them's logged, so don't think that we're not doing it, because we are, and like I said, I promised everybody, end of year, you get a porky goodie bag, uh a mug, a top, a t-shirt, you know, stuff like that, and uh, some VIP tickets, after show party tickets. As regards the emails, people asking for mugs and stuff like that, we haven't got a supplier yet, the designs are all done, I'm just waiting on uh, to see what the K official are doing with us, if they're still working with us or not, uh, and hopefully they will be because we get on great with them, and uh, it's just a case of sorting the logistics out. I, we have had quotes for stuff and that, and nothing's for now, is it? Nothing's cheap, unless you buy millions of them. But uh, they won't be, they won't be dear. I can assure you that. Uh, they'll all be posted second class. Just going to try and keep costs down. That's all. There's, we're not any, to rip anybody off. Uh, we just want to see great fights and get some great stuff, great, great footage on the channel. There'll be. Uh, there's all sorts lined up. Sometimes my brain can't get take it all in. This is why. <laughs> just give, give, give me these. Somebody just give me these. Mail or Oyx Bay, Oyster Bay, New Zealand. Twelve quid a bottle. So I'll have I'm gonna have what probably about a bottle of that today with my dinner. But as regards. The, the stuff now we just want to we just want to see great fights and get great interviews if i don't get interviews on channel i'm not really bothered don't don't bother me really you know i'd like to get eddie Earn on here and set about him with some proper questions that nobody else dare ask him because nobody dare ask the real questions in boxing dare they but if i don't so be it i'd rather just have hardcore fans on here talking boxing at least you know we're hard at least you know we hardcore boxing fans that at, at, at least you know they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna say what they think aren't they they're not they're not gonna beat about the bush like a lot of them is that darker oh that's better so that's how I look at it. Shout out to Nikki Smedley. Uh, Nikki has got a. Just a text of Frank there. Shout out to Nikki Smedley. Uh, nice kid, Nikki. He's got a show, Black Cat Boxing, on March the 16th. Let me just have a look. March the 16th, Nikki's show in Sheffield, day after Dennis's show. Uh, and he's got Rocco Smedley, that's the grandson of Chris Smedley. I think it's Luke's son as well. Let's have a look. I think it, I think it is. He's fighting Ar Ar Arlie Betts. The door, oh, it's location, Sheffield Works Department, Ely Bank Road. That's all it says on it, Black Cat Boxing. 
and they've got on uh, fire. They've got a fire shows on. I think that's fire breathing, isn't it? Uh, the acts off the BGT Britain's Got Talent singers, a Michael Jackson tribute. So it's all good stuff, isn't it? It's all good positive stuff. I'm right pleased for uh, Finicky and uh, his brother. Nice kids. I got on with him. Uh, good boxer, Nicky, back in his day. It's a shame that he's finished. They both are. I think Luke's got an arm injury. A bad arm injury, but both good kids. So, but yeah, let me just let me just uh, let me just wish them all the best, Nicky. Let me just get back to what we're looking at then. Uh, here we are. We just spoke about that, and we does Eddie and Shara in his airpiece. I don't know. Fans would have to ask Eddie. So Eddie, do you, do you shower in your toupee, or do you put one of them caps on? You know, like what uh, Terry Wogan used to put on his head. Because Terry Wogan had like a cap on his, didn't he? Uh, I just wondered, Eddie. Eddie, do you do you do you get it, do you let it get wet, or what? What, what do you feed it, Eddie? I just don't know. Who in the U who is the UK boxer on about who's going to come out of the closet? Uh, I've heard that somebody might be coming out of the closet. Um, I ain't got a problem with, with gays in boxing. Uh, not got a problem with it at all. Uh, I just think I don't think it'd be a big issue in nowadays in today's PC world if someone were, somebody were to come out of the closet. Sky would obviously love that, wouldn't they? They'd want uh, first refusals on it or BT or whoever, but. Why should it be a problem? You are what you are, aren't you? I don't. The the, the American guy who came out who, who, who was gay. Everybody forgot about it, didn't they? After a couple of days, the Frank Maloney thing. I think we're a little bit different. Uh, but uh, but no, I don't. I don't think it, think it being a problem. And if if was somebody wants to come out and say that, you know, it won't affect me how I feel about them as 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 a fighter. The, I mean, who's going to tell them to their face anyway? They're a fighter, but it's their business, isn't it? But it won't, it won't bother me if anybody had to do that. I still have, I still have them on the channel. I'd still give my opinion about boxing about them. So, no, it's just somebody's asked me that. Number three, is pay per view now being abused by promoters and TV companies? Yet yeah, I think pay per views being abused. Everybody knows my opinion on pay per view. I don't agree with it. I think there's enough money on the gate. It's up to prom to promoters to promote the shows and sell them out instead of just sitting back, putting pay-per-view shows on, sending your fighter to fight away from home and collecting your your, your cut. I think it's wrong. Uh, you've, but you've now got boxers, certain boxers who have got about got high profiles, and and they're knocking back millions of pounds. I'm not digging anybody out in particular. Uh, I just want to see great fights, but I think people have to be paid what they're worth. For example, Dillian White. Dillian's a great fighter, and he's got to be up there now, hasn't he? He's beat Parker, and he dropped him, didn't he? He's beat Chisora, knocked him out. Uh, beat Lucas Brown. You know, he's got three good wins there. Uh, Dillian White's not fought for a European title yet. He's not fought above British level. And he's knocking back millions to fight Joshua, but I can see where he's coming from for that. But he's a pay-per-view star now, Dillian, isn't he? But that's how it's going, isn't it? Guys that have not fought for a European title they're in pay-per-view fights. It's just how the game's going, I suppose. It, it's just how it's going. I don't agree with it, but if, if it's a short career, isn't it? It's a short career, and I think Dillian White against Wilders are probably a 52-48 fight. Dillian White being the 48, Wilder being the 52, because he's got that equaliser on him in both hands. But uh, I think that pay-per-view is being abused, uh, and it has been now for two for a good few years. Since Carl Froch set the president, uh, when he came back with them three pay-per-views, he came and did Kessler and two Groves fights. Since then, everything's gone pay-per-view, hasn't it? So that's just boxing, isn't it? Uh, but yeah, it has. It's getting a bit silly now, isn't it? You got Eddie Earn going, oh, so and so don't do numbers. You know, 50, 50, 60, 40, 75, 25, 70, 30. Who cares? Just put the fights on. Who cares? You know what I mean? 
Who cares about it? Where's muck come from in here? Need to wash this car. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point to talk about was intense beef. Do you know when you see these IFL videos from Coogan Cassius and it says intense beef? It always says intense beef, doesn't it, at the beginning? Why don't it say uh, laughing lobster or, or curled up spam or pulled pork? You know what I mean? Or roast pig. It always says intense beef. And then the intense beef just two guys like that. With a nose to nose. It's a title designed to get you to to to, to get to get them views. Intense beef. Davy Day. Intense beef, Tony Bellew. Where were intense beef there? Eddie Earn and Davy Day. It said intense beef because Davy Day said I'm gonna knock Tony Bell you out, then I'm gonna come and sign all your fighters. Intense beef. How's that intense beef? Davy Day were held together by super glue. He managed to squeeze two pay-per-view fights out of Sky five years after they said they'd never work with him again because they were finished. After he pulled out the two Tyson Fury fights. After not long after, sorry. That performance against Vladimir Klitschko. So really, Davy Day, the Klitschko fight was shocking. The other fights he had, Valueff and John Ruiz, were terrible as well, weren't they? Klitschko was shocking. Then he went missing. Then he created intense beef with Chisora. He ended up getting good money to fight him. But the Tyson Fury pullouts and then the Tony Bellew two farcical fights. Farcical. But intense beef... Now, where's the intense beef now? Bellew and David A, they sat laughing and joking as pundits on Sky. And you, the fans that bought it, the laugh is on you. All you who bought the hay fight, who bought into it. And me as well, I bought into it. The laugh's on us. Eddie Earn and David A have got intense beef. Intense beef. The best mates, they were having breakfast of the week in... Uh, pla Plaz, plaza, is it plaza or some hotel or something, whatever, some plaza hotel, David Day, the one he stops in, who's his sponsor, he stops there, he gets his room and everything and all his food and all that for free, doesn't he, because that's his sponsor, intense beef though, isn't it? there's no intense beef, intense beef, Dillian White, Joshua, but even they've got respect for each other, but that's intense beef, you're not going to get them laughing and joking, are you? You're not going to get Carl Frotch and George Groves laughing and joking, aren't you? That's intense beef. But when they have to sell a fight, when the fight has to be sold, like like uh, Bellew against David Day, they've got to create this intense beef, haven't they? They've got to create it. But Chisora against White... That had to. That were an hard sell for pay for you, wasn't it, for them? That were a really hard sell, but they got on with it, didn't they? But yeah, that that's probably intense beef. I don't think they're ever going to be best mates, are they? Uh, Chisora, Chisora, and what what's he called? D D uh, Dillian White. They're not. They're not. They're never going to be best mates. But uh, they, oh, 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 all 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 this intense beef stuff. It just does my head in. I get fed up of it. So. Dare to be great. Matchmaking. Is this the way forward? Dare to be great matchmaking. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, sooner or later, somebody's going to get hurt with this. Uh... Sooner or later, somebody's going to get hurt with this dare to be great matchmaking. Uh, I think that... I think some of the, some of these fights are shocking. The Ted Cheeseman one. Ted Cheeseman should have stayed around British level, shouldn't he, learning his trade. Now, he got an inflated WBA ranking, so they felt like they had to act on it. Now, if you remember when Carl Frotch, uh, what, British champion, Mick Hennessy had him learning his craft, didn't he? 
he had Carl learning his craft because he couldn't get the European title fight against Christian and Sanavea. So they were, he was were learning his craft at, at British level. You know, fighting likes of Brian McGee and Robin Reed. People, you know, Brian McGee went on to win a world title, didn't he? Uh, Robin Reed were a former world champion, so he learnt his craft. But uh, when you've got Ted Cheeseman, how's Ted Cheeseman learning his craft at British level? They put him in at European level with Garcia. The Brit, it were too, it came too early for him. Now I know they're trying to say dare to be great, but you've got to look at it like this. Ted Cheeseman were rushed. He were rushed in that fight because they need somebody to start carrying them shows. And I think they might be doing that with David Allen, you know, at the moment. Yeah, David Allen went in with Lewis Ortiz and Dillian White, but he never won a round, did he, David? Now they're putting David in with Lucas Brown, who was a massive puncher. But Lucas Brown's 40 year old, isn't he? They might be rushing David off that, and if David loses against Brown, he's going to fight the loser at Chisora against Parker. Now, Chis Chisora and Parker, they're, they're a bit too far for, for David, I think, at the moment. I think that if he loses against Brown, he could fight Chisora or Parker, but he might take some punishment. If he beats Brown, and Parker beats Chisora, which I think he will, Dave against Parker would be a great fight, wouldn't it? I'd love that, but is Dave trying to be rushed so he could end line Sky shows? Yeah. Because you bet your bottom dollar Sky are, they're in a tight spot at the moment, Sky Sports. The reason being, they've got no headline arcs, they've got no pay-per-view stars, have they? Over the goes, pay-per-view. They're telling us Dillian White's pay-per-view, but only in right fights. Dillian's not fought for a European title yet. He can't get a world title shot because all belts are tied up, aren't they? But you'd have thought he'd have gone and fight Caballel, wouldn't you? Dillian White against Caballel. I think that's a great fight for a European title. But Caballel's not really known to us, is he? But, uh it is what it is, isn't it? Look at all the road here, man. There they are. But yeah, uh, so, dare to be great matchmaking. Well, when I think of dare to be great, I think of Brian the Lion Rose against Andrade. Gavin Reese against Broner. Dare to be great. Paul Smith against Andre Ward after fighting journeymen like David Sarabia. Oh, it's okay. You can fight Arthur Abraham twice, then Paul, then Andre Ward, Paul. It's okay. Forgot something now. But, uh, It is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is, but... Dare to be great matchmaking, in my opinion, is... Scandalous. And like I said, somebody sooner or later is going to get hurt. They're going to get hurt, proper hurt. I just, I just worry about some of matchmaking I'm seeing lately. Like I said, they're rushing them, aren't they? Adam, aka the Spin Doctor, Mr. Bean, creepiest man in boxing, Smith saying that he's had words behind the scenes with Eddie Hearn. Do you think Eddie Hearn's bothered about what you've got to say, Mr Bean, behind the scenes? He's not bothered about what you've got to say. They're coining it in. It ain't about the love, Adam, it's all about the dough. Coining it in, and they're not bothered about what people think. But... Which brings me to the video. Have you seen the video on my channel? Eddie Hearn going, going for the auditioning for Greatest Dancer. Hey, what do you think to Eddie's toupee? That'll be what it looks like in another couple of years. What he's going to do is going to build it up steadily. And then before you know where you are, it's going to be like a Christopher Eubank job. You know when he's got his scalp tattooed? But Eddie's gone for full, full bag of mashings, hasn't it? Full Terry Wogan. But uh, it's all good banter, isn't it? It's all good banter, but let's just hope that it gets a, a, f a, few, a few likes. But... Like I said, Dennis, Dennis, Dennis can say it's in bad taste. Dennis can say it's in bad taste. 
But uh, coppers have just gone down there. Dennis can say it's in bad taste, but to me, bad taste is taking Jamie McDonnell off you when you've got 300 grand invested in him. That's bad taste. A ban I mean, NJ superimposing Eddie Earns head on some that and putting it out as a bit of a laugh. That's not bad taste. Bad taste when somebody's nicking your livelihood. That's bad taste. And then when you don't get to punch him in the mouth for doing it. That to me is bad taste. So Dennis, I don't agree with you. Dennis is not into social media though, is he? That's probably why. You know, he's had a rough 10 year in boxing the last 10 year. But uh, he, might, he might get a grip of it one day. Who knows, he might even learn off me. Like I've learned off him. But, uh but we'll see, we'll see, won't we? We'll see. But uh, other than that, I'm all right. I've just got a couple more things I want to go through here. Next five minutes. Uh, when promoters get a guy who's good or who's a name, do they abuse the fans by swerving certain fights, Russell? Yeah, I think they do. I think they do. I think they do. Uh, why doesn't Louis Ortiz? name get mentioned with the Fantastic Four. Well, the Fantastic Four is... Can I get a pull-off, please, see if I'm filming here. You know, I don't think you need a permit, do you, to film? In your car. May I get a pull-up here now? I have no on me. And I'll whip that straight off if somebody pulls me. I've not had a drink. Uh, why doesn't Louis Ortiz get a mention? I've got my wallet, I don't know. Why doesn't Louis Ortiz get a mention? Why not? Why? Why don't he get a mention? With Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, Dillian White, the Fantastic Four. Dillian, Dillian White's words, not mine. Why doesn't Ortiz get a mention? Then we can call it the famous five. Because we all know what Ortiz did to Wilder, don't we? That's why he's not going to get a mention. Go and watch the Wilder fight. Wilder only won them rounds that he dropped him in. Same as Wilder, more or less, only won them rounds that Tyson Fury got dropped down in. He didn't really win many others, did he? He could probably give him a sh share of a couple, but as far as I'm concerned, Ortiz is not going to get a mention, is he? Don't sell a ticket. Southpaw, Cuban, slick, experienced, punches hard. Of course, he's not going to get a mention, is he? Joshua wouldn't dare even utter his name when he were at matchroom. Louis Ortiz, he didn't want to mention him. So yeah, that's my opinion. I'm entitled to it. Smells gorgeous, them black eyes. Smell loads better when they're free, don't they? As well. But uh, but yeah, it's uh, interesting times. I want to know why Louis Ortiz don't get a mention. People are all talking about Dillian White, Wilder, Fury, Joshua. They're the big four, aren't they? But Louis Ortiz don't get a shout, and they're not queuing up to fight him, are they? At the moment, Brazil don't want to fight him, does he? He'll get took out. Brazil would rather fight Dillian White on pay-per-view, wouldn't he? Brazil coming over to England on his second pay-per-view. Oh, oh. He think all his birthdays that come at once, won't he, Brazil? Just, just, how I, just how I look at it. Just how I look at it. What are we on here? 28 minutes. Finish off here now. We'll get some dinner then. Get some dinner down me. A large glass of red. Bit of dinner down me. A large glass of red. And Robert, your father's brother. But uh, but getting back to uh, Louis Ortiz, I think he's the real deal. Him, Louis Ortiz. I think he is the real deal. He's the real deal, Holyfield, isn't he? He's the real deal. 
and uh, he's never gonna get a fair crack at whip because he's that good, isn't he? That's better. He's that good. Louis Sorties is that good. He's not gonna get a fair crack at whip. Just my opinion. Um, uh, it's just how, how I see it at the moment. I just, just how I see it. But uh, no, we'll see, won't we? I might do an extra ten minutes. Just get these other ones done off, and that's it for today. Then, uh, what do you reckon? What? Right, we're back. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, here's a good one, here's a good one that somebody mentioned. See, people are starting to listen now. I'm not saying I'm voice for a movement or a revolution or anything, but people are starting to listen because there's that much rubbish out there. Here's one for you, here's this. Listen to this one. Joseph Calzaghi and Christopher Livingston Eubanks. I think he was born Eubanks and he took the S off, didn't he? Oh, we're at Eubank. Either way, take the Nigel Ben fight out because that's at middleweight. So I'm a bit of a super middleweight specialist. Joe Calzaghi and Christopher Eubank had 40 wins with the WBO at super middleweight. 40! Unbelievable, isn't it? 40. Altogether, they had 41 WBO wins. Now, let me have a look. Let me have a look how many times Eubank defended that belt as a middleweight. I'm sure it's... F Carl Zaghi had 22 title fights, didn't he, at super middleweight. And eight of them were former or current champions. Now... Who were the other 14? Now, when you look at Chris Eubank, Chris Eubank had 19 world title wins with the WBO, 19. Now, middleweight, one, two, three. Four. So you'd have to take, then he moved up, then he said you'd take one, two, three, four. So he had 15 WBO super middleweight wins, Chris Eubank. Four of them were super middle, so that's 19 wins with WBO. Carl Zaghi had 22 wins with WBO. So you've got 41 World title fights there, the WBO. This is why I said for years the WBO was weak. 41 World Boxing Organization title wins. 22 for Carl Zaghi with Frank Warren. 19 for Eubank with Barry Hearn. Are we seeing the same pattern with Anthony Joshua? with Barry Hearn because they know that that works. Longevity is about getting more miles out at clock, isn't it? Now Joshua, they're going to get as much mileage out of Joshua as they can uh, as possible, aren't they really, when you think about it? That's how I look at it. They're going to get as much mileage as they can out of him, aren't they? And that's just the way of the world at the moment, I suppose, really, isn't it? It's just how it goes, isn't it? But as far as I'm concerned, I think it's an abuse. It's an abuse by promoters. What they're doing with Joshua is a, is abuse. Is it's just abusing us. Now, when if you back up a few years and look at Herbie Hyde on box rec, Herbie Hyde won the world heavyweight title, but nobody recognised belt, did they? Really? Then the WBO back in the 90s were like the IBO now, but Herbie Hyde. He won a world title. Now Barry Hearn cashed him in to Bob Adam, didn't he? First defence. Herbie Hyde was no. He wasn't smart enough to deal with Barry Hearn behind the scenes. He got a few million out of job, but what did Barry get? Come on, Barry. Come and tell us what you really got. 
we'd love to know. But uh, Riddick Bow just bashed him up, didn't he? So they cashed her behind in first defence, didn't they? Why didn't they cash Joshua into Wilder then? Because he got offered 50 million, didn't he? Why didn't he take that fight? Because they're making that much money behind scenes. There's, there's, there's all sorts of people involved. And they need Anthony Joshua to be a cash cow for years. These sponsorship deals. I spoke to somebody last night about it who was in the know. And these sponsorship deals. They run for quite a few years. It, some of them are tied up for five and seven years. And they're performance related. You know it was important that Joshua got a knockout in his last fight. Because... That some of the stuff in his contracts with his sponsors, if he gets knockouts, you know, he gets more money in that. And this is why they're going to need to knock guys out. This is why the. How can I explain it? This is why they're not going to risk it against Wilder. Yeah, it's a big fight, but when you've got money that you're making outside of boxing, outside of the ring, why do you need to be taking big risks in it? Because you're always going to make money. Joshua's going to be set up for life if he lost every penny tomorrow. It, there'd, be, there'd be all sorts of incentives. I mean, the the book deal that they're doing, putting together for Joshua and now HarperCollins, it's... You know, it, it's unprecedented, the money for a British sports star, sports star the money that's going to be on offer to Joshua. Now... Is he going to put the truth in the book? You tend to find that people, when they're skint, they tend to tell you everything. Joshua's not skint, so he's not going to tell us everything, is he? I don't think so, of course. There's a lot of stuff that he's not going to come out, that's not going to come out. Now, it's not for me to say what, 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 what's going to be in the book, because I don't know him, do I, personally? I've met him, he's not my cup of tea, but we only know what we're told in media, don't we, but... To make the the deal that the the point together for his book is for his book deals and quite a few book deals. It'll all it'll all it'll all be it'll all be in incentives, won't it? And things like that. But it's one of them things, isn't it? Boxers nowadays they're gonna they're gonna earn, aren't they? If they can, and you know Joshua's all about business. What he is about is about money. It's about money. You've heard him say he wants to set his family up. Well, if you can't set your family up with 100 million, what can you do? In my opinion, right, if Anthony Joshua wants to win, win the fans back over, he should have fought Jarrell Miller, fought him at Wembley, done all tickets half price, and not done a pay per view. And that way you're going to get people back on side, aren't you? When you're making everything about money and looking like a greedy little sod, because that's what he looks like. He looks like a greedy little sod, doesn't he? That, that's what he looks like, do you know what I mean? That's just my opinion. He looks like a greedy little sod and... Uh... If you want to win fans over, you've got to... Uh... You've got to you've got to uh, be right with fans and that. You can't just keep taking all the time and things like that. You've got to uh, be right. Every now and then you have to give back. Now, he could have done the fight with uh, Wilder or Fury at 50-50 and said, you know what, I'm just going to do it just this once. And if I win, I'm never going to do it again. He could do that just to get all belts, cunning all lineal status, if there even is a lineal status. I mean, that's that's in question at the moment, but if the fans see Tyson as lineal champion, so be it. But Lennox Lewis must have, must, must have still been lineal champion then. He could come back now, Lennox and still, Lennox and still a bit champ, couldn't he? Rocky Marciano, they could dig him up and he'd still a bit champ, wouldn't he? He never lost his belt in the ring, but I don't believe in that lineal status. I know Tyson's a great fighter and masterful boxer, but I don't believe in that lineal status. I'm sorry, but it is a good win, and I, don't, I think Tyson's that big a star now. He don't need a uh, he doesn't need a, a belt, does he? And if truth be known, he's still got ring belt, hasn't he? Because he hasn't lost, does he? But I don't buy into that lineal status. But what I do buy into is good fights. I don't buy into hype and frauds. I think Joshua now, they all look, he all looks a bit grubby, doesn't it? It's all gone a bit grubby, hasn't it, for him and Eddie Earn and Barry Earn. It all looks... And McCracken as well. You'd have to put McCracken into that batch. It all looks a bit grubby. So... But anyway, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing, this great sport that we all love. Alright? Peace. I think it's going to go, that battery now.
think I've done everything in it. Oh, questions I wanted to do anyway. So I'm going to get some dinner now. Joshua don't want to fight Walter. 